Hi guys, welcome to this markup RXP video. Uh, I've got another grid alignment example for you to work through, just demonstrating some more features of markup RXP. So without further ado, let's jump in. So this is a stocking pattern from Dimensions. Um, so step one is obviously the visual inspection. And I can see uh, I've got a pattern here. The thing I'm first drawn to is that there's no symbol title bar at the top. And I'm, I've put a big gray circle in as well, just for, to copyright issues. And on the second page, which I'm only gonna look, I'm not gonna look at page three. Again, there's no um, symbol title bar at the top. So what does it mean when there's no symbol title bar up here? Well, if you go into full chart mode, here, one or more pages are not correctly sized. And you can see that it's just got the number one in. And here it tells you to click on the triangles for more information. And if we click on a triangle, it basically said there's no grid defined on this page. And also on page one, there's no grid defined on this page. So it's telling us that there's no grid defined on this page. So if I try and select symbols, we get nothing. And if I try to mark up anything, nothing happens because there's no grid for mark bar XP to figure out what's going on. So my visual inspection, um, I can look at page one and I can see, all right, that's, it, it looks fairly straight. Uh, that looks good. The grid lines here, um, go to pan zoom here. It's dimensions, and I'm familiar with dimensions charts. These are dotted grid lines, so I know I'm going to have to set my grid up, uh, but we're going to have a look at that. And the other thing that uh, in my visual inspection that I'm drawn to is the fact that this chart looks to be this wide, and this chart is it's not square, and it looks to be a lot wider. So there's going to be a few little things that we're going to have to work on there. We don't need to rotate the chart, everything's good, so there's no 90 degrees. There's also, because the chart's straight on the page, there's no auto-rotate. So we're straight into setting the grid boundary. So when we come to set the grid boundary, uh, we obviously have our free drag option here, but in this particular case, what I would do is I would just move the boundary up so the grid boundary so it's somewhere close to start with it doesn't have to be perfect and sometimes you just sort of bring in that in just to get it somewhere close and then what i would do is because we've got all four corners viewed of the chart when i move that chart anywhere for this like that it'll move the whole chart which we don't want to do but here i've got this bit of the chart that i can just zoom in on so what we do here is just basically pick that and I'm going to set up the grid boundary. So that's looking not bad. We probably only really need to do the two corners and we're bringing him down. So that's our grid boundary and you can see here that the red grid and the blue bounding box are aligned. So there's, there's no rotation. So we don't need to use our free drag option. Now, what's happening here is this is an interesting one because Mark of RXP has looked at the grid boundary and it's it's determined, I'll just turn that off for the time being, it's figured out um, here how thick the grid lines are. So it's picking up these thicker grid lines because those thicker grid lines are solid, whereas these thinner grid lines are dotted. And the pattern matcher technique looks for um, solid lines and so it doesn't pick up these dotted lines so it's only picking up these thicker lines but we also have an interesting problem in that the top left hand corner of the chart is blank so Marco Barisby has taken that width and put it up here and then extended that across so that's why these lines aren't actually lining up with the thicker grid lines but that's our starting point so that's our grid boundary defined on this particular chart. We now want to set up our grid lines. And we have two options for setting up grid lines. Option number one is to open up the set chart size and turn the grid off and then just simply count across. So we can count as 
um, if we zoom in, we can see that there's uh, one, two, three, four here. And I tend to zoom out. And I go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. And then at this end, there's another four. So that tells me there's 188 columns across. So let's just put our width up to 188. Ooh. Seven, eight, and we'll put our grid back on. This is the, you can see that looks okay, but we just need to move that in. So I'm going to use this bottom one because here there's no reference point because the grid's laid the way the grid's laid out. So let's just move him across slightly. A bit too far. If we need more adjustment, we can always zoom in, remember. So that's not bad. Is it going to get, am I going to get it on the line or not? Let's have a look. Yeah, that's where he's going to sit. Okay. And we can go across the, the chart. Yeah. And he just needs moving out slightly. A bit more maybe. Oh. So he's lined up nicely. Okay. That's one way of doing it where we've counted across. The other way that we can do it, if, you, if you're lazy and you don't want to count down, I've got the height here. I can see there's a red line here. That red line needs to be on number one. So I can start increasing this. So he's moved up here. He's moved up a bit more. So I'm just, just tapping this. Okay. So number one's pretty close but you can see here that these lines are slightly misaligned so we'll keep going that's looking better right now these lines have gone a little bit too high so let's bring that down just one at a time now that looks quite nice oh I, put that back i think that's gone a little possibly a little bit too far Look. Nine, ten. That's not looking too bad there. So we just messed about with the numbers rather than counting it. Sometimes you can just mess about with the numbers to see what you've got. So it's lined up quite nicely at the bottom. And at the top, he probably just needs a little bit of adjustment. Just to get him in line nicely. Okay, so that's page one done. Uh, or page two in this particular case. And he's lined up. And if we go to our full chart view, we can now see that it says our page here is 188 wide by 110 high. But we still haven't defined the grid on here. So let's turn on link views. Click that. And then we can come in to adjust the grid. So here again, we've got a similar setup. So I'm going to work through exactly the same things. Usually when you've done uh, the visual inspection for one page of your chart, it's usually a rinse and repeat for all the other pages generally. Okay, so I know I don't need to rotate. So that's the chart rotations taken care of. Quickly, we'll quickly set up the grid boundary. Pretty certain that the chart should be nice and straight, so we don't need to do chart outline. Let's zoom in. Here. So I'm just putting one on that corner, because he's good, and we'll go down to the other corner and set him up. So I'm pretty happy that that'll be my chart outline because my grid's square, so I've just done two corners. So now we are into setting up the chart size and we can just quickly zip through this. So all I'm doing is I'm looking at the chart lines. I'm, I haven't counted how many are across. So we can see this big thick line wants to be in line here. So just keep moving him in a bit more, a little bit more, a bit finer control now. So he's lined, he's getting lined up here, but you can see that he's not aligned at this point. Oh, that looks.
looks not bad. Oh, oh, yeah, he's misaligned there, so it's one more, maybe. Yeah, that's okay, that's nice. Okay, so let's zoom in. And then it's just a tweak to the boundaries. It's not bad. And we'll zip right across. And he looks good. And we could repeat the same thing, just if we zoom up here. If you wanted to, like I say, you can turn the grid size off and go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. And that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 525. So it's up to you which way you want to do it. You can go either way. And there we go. That's actually not bad. So we've now lined up our second grid. Oh, we'll just adjust that bottom boundary slightly. Bring him down. Just to get him in line. A little bit more. There we go. That's nice. So we've adjusted it. And that's lined our two grids up based on what we've been presented with. But when we go to full chart view here, and we can zoom out, we've now got a problem because this grid is 188 wide, but this grid is 144 wide. So when we zoom in on the page break, you can see that Marco Bar XP has had to extend this chart to even though it's only 144 wide to sort of stretch it out in full chart mode whereas the bottom part of your page is not correct so how do we fix this problem okay so what we need to do is we need we need to make both pages the same size well how do we do that well page two is 188 wide page one's 144 wide we need to add 44 extra columns to page one so let's jump into a just grid. Uh, we don't need to rotate, that's fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in. And here, if you look, 10, 20, 30, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's about that distance I'm going to have to add. So let's, let's just move him across to there. Okay, so I've just extended the grid out. I know that I've got to make him 188 wide. So let's make that 188. And therefore... If I was to add the extra 44 columns, I would expect to see an extra 44 columns. There's my grid line, but there should be 44 columns. I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 1, 2, 3. So we need to just, just extend him out a little bit. Now, if you look at that, that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's your extra 44 columns you've added. And we'll just make sure now, if you look, He's just a little bit to the left of our grid line. So what I would like to do, just move him, just roll my finger slightly. Let the grid adjust. And there, that's lined that nicely. And then we can zoom across our chart. Okay, so on this side, we might just want to move him out slightly. And there we go. So what we've done there is we've added an additional... 44 columns to our grid to make it the same size so now when we go into full chart view you can see that that's 188 he's 188 and if we zoom in now you can see that the charts are nicely aligned with each other uh, in full chart view okay so that gives you a very quick overview of Another approach to lining up uh, grids in Marker Bar XP. In this particular case, we had a good uh, copy of a PDF. The chart was nice and straight. The grid lines were nice and straight, but the grid lines were dotted. And so Marker Bar XP's contrast setting, the automatic way it will detect grids, doesn't work. And that's when we, we go back to the manual layout of rows and columns. But this chart had an extra little uh, caveat in that the grid sizes on two pages were different. Marker Bar XP can still handle that, but we just need to be a little bit more creative on how we put those charts together. So I hope that explains how you would tackle this kind of chart. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. If you'd like to see any more types of uh, charts uh, done like this in Marker Bar XP, let me know and I'll see what I can do. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Have a great day.
Thanks very much.